architecture. So today, let's say uh, this tutorial is like part one from like a couple. It's going to be a three-parter on the transformer models or LLMs in general. So let's say it's kind of it's not going to be all theoretical, but like we're going to be trying to understand the models in some depth. Uh, so that like, this is like a essential, not only for this, like um, for, for this week channel uh, challenge, but also like in general, like if you, especially if you want to go into like a gen, gen AI, uh, you should have like some good understanding of how these model, models work. So let's just like start. So as I said, it's going to be like uh, the first part the first part of like um, um, so some some of these things that we're going to talk about today, we can talk. We're going to be talking about in upcoming tutorials as well. So just like um, let me share my screen. Sorry. Okay, so I suppose you hear me well and you can see my screen. That's correct. Can I get like a confirmation? Okay, thank you. So yeah, as I said, this is an overview of LLMs. In particular, we're talking about like the transformer architecture. Um, and just the main concepts uh, there. In so this is the agenda. We're talking about the um like uh, overview of LLM, the transformer architecture, and the input to the models. Um, if uh, time allows, we're going to discuss the uh, training, but it's not um, not in any details, just like some kind of like uh, ex explanation, um, like preliminary explanation so that like, um, I mean, uh, I know you are reading the challenge document and you're coming across all of this stuff, so just um if we have time we're going to go through four or five anyway so uh that this is the definition of llm so already like you already know this we already talked about this but like the uh, the thing is that these are deep learning models huge powerful and they are trained on a very large data um so this is just a language model is a probabilistic model of natural language with an ability to achieve general purpose language generation so this is like uh, the definition of like the language model itself um okay so as uh, like um as the lms ha like acquire these abilities uh, by learning the the relationships or like uh, basically relationships in text uh, from like a huge amount of text um, data um, and it is important it's like is um, the training is self-supervised and semi-supervised so the the first st stage the one that we're going to talk about today is all the self-supervised part the semi-supervised is like when you um, make the the models are more, more specialized for a particular um, kind of uh, NLP uh, or natural language process. Uh, okay, so um, this is just like the definition. This is like the history already. Like maybe you're aware of this, like all of this explosion of uh, large language models happened after the paper by Google, which is about attention. It's attention all, all you need. This is like the one that introduced the transformer architecture and um so this was in 2017 and then um 2020 there was a bird and this other um yeah so here like what is before and then like uh with gbt and gbt3 like this is 2021 so this is like really just the last um uh for three for three to four years basically uh okay so uh, i think we talked about this before but like prior up to 2020 the fine-tuning was necessary 
to accomplish anything but after like the larger sized models uh, it became like it's possible to just use prompt engineering to achieve whatever like um, uh, to to like uh, to specialize like to ask the model to part to to do particular things like uh, building chatbots and stuff that you don't need to fine tune the model of course for this week challenge what we are trying to do is actually fine tuning so this is like a, a different uh, it's different from prompt engineering um okay so this is just about the history so uh this is what we're going to be diving into this what is a transformer okay um so before like here i'm talking about also like the predecessor for transformers so before talking about transformer what that people went were trying to so the point here we're trying to understand language so language is or text anything uh, like um when you want to do any process that requires some understanding of text Text is a sequence of words, right? Like a sentence or like a document is like um, uh, a, a collection of sentences, a collection of paragraphs. So these are sequ sequence of words and the position and the order of these words, how they appear matters. So before there was like um, uh, recursive um, like, uh, and, uh, like in your networks, these are the ones that were uh, so this because they take into account like basically the sequence so they are like they are taking uh, in um, in uh, in consideration the sequential dependency of the of the of the text uh, so. Um, so tasks like language modeling, these are like could benefit from the sequential nature for, from RNNs, uh, and they could capture the contextual uh, con contextual information. Okay, so this is like the predecessor for for transformers, uh, but okay, um, the or the current. Uh, so the issue with the recurrent neural networks is just like um, more like uh, what is like you can see why they were not as good is that because um, they for for recurrent uh, neural networks the sequence what matters the most is like the recent the most recent information so in a sentence it will be like the just the previous word. And also because like um, recurrent neural networks, also the computations on them cannot be parallelized really. So it was computationally expensive, uh, and also like really is not a really great model for for modeling language. So, so that's why it wasn't as successful or as like great. So like we're talking going to talk to talk about transformers. We have to talk about attention. So a transformer model is made from transformer blocks, and uh, in a transformer block there has to be a, um, a self attention layer. So, but we're going to start to start to talk about attention. It's a self attention. Um, so, what is attention? The goal of the attention is to um, take into account basically the context. So, if you want to represent, you, you want to uh, have a representation of a word, talking taking into account adjacent or oh, sorry the context so the the words that um came before it if we're talking about uh, um a causal a causal uh, language modeling so um say that i want to say okay let's just like actually look at this uh, in a way that is clearer so let's see see okay so say and so there is an example sorry the, the image is so this is a sentence the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired okay so just looking at the word like um the, the, to understand like why why that the attention is important so there are relationships between this like for example the meaning of it in this sentence 
here is related to the meaning of animal, right? Because like is this so this pronoun is refer co-referring to this to this noun. Uh, if like I'm, I'm only paying attention, like in R and N, I'm only paying attention to the previous word because it's like no, it's not, it's not, um, it's not that's not what uh, what matters. What matters is like six words back. So I need to somehow when I with the model when it's like uh, giving me a representation of this word or or like a um, a. a a composite representation of the whole sentence it has to relate it with animal somehow okay so this is a point the point is i want to find um sorry i shouldn't go out oh, sorry the point is i want to find a way to to encode the relationship between words like um let's say uh, each word with uh, with all the words that came before it in the sequence and uh, within the learning then the the model is going to um understand that like uh, the relationship is the strongest with this word in particular and the relationship to other words before it are like weaker okay so just to model that okay um so i'm going in and out as I said, like the attention mechanism allows the model to focus on different parts of the input sequence uh, and to capture the dependencies, the long grain dependencies, not just the previous word, but like all the long grain dependencies, like it can be like uh, all previous sequence uh, of words. As here, like I'm giving examples of relationships, like the highlighted words, like there's a sentence, the keys to the cabinet are on the table. The meaning of R is related to the keys because this, this, um, uh, or the use of the, 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 sorry, this conjugation of the, of the word, the, the verb to be is decided by that the keys is a plural, for example. Here, the meaning of like the chicken crossed the street because it wanted to get to the other side. The meaning of it is, is, uh, is, it is referring to the chicken. Um, there is this, like in the sixth sentence, I walked, I walked along the pond and noticed that uh, one of the trees along the bank had fallen into the water after the storm. The word bank, of course, in generally, it can be like um, can be the financial institution, right? It can also be like the side, um, but here it's it's uh, it's like it's the land next to the pond because like we have one here. So the meaning of this word is related to this one, which is like uh, uh, maybe, I don't know, nine words before it or something like that. So yes, I, the, the thing is that attention is the method how the model um, um, like encodes the relationship between uh, the words and the word that, uh, the other words that come in, this, in the same sequence of text uh okay so okay so like there are different types of attention or like the in the um, simplest form what i want to do if i have a sequence of this is my sequence x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 are my like five words in a sequence let's say or five tokens to be more accurate um and i want to have uh like a, i in the self attention layer uh, i want for the output i will relate uh i want to to have the relationship between the words uh, each word and the words that come before it so for a1 which is the first one there is it's only related to x1 so because like there are no words before it for a2 it will be uh, uh, um, the relationship to x1 and x2 uh, eight, a three, it will be like a x one, x two, and x three. All of that is, is this way. So this is in the backward look or the causal or backward looking at self attention. Um, and yeah, so an important part here is that like um, computation at each step here is going to be independent of each other and can be parallelized, unlike the RNNs. Uh, I'm not here, I'm not mentioning the actual computation, but what we do to find the relationship between two, of course, 
the words here are not actual words, but the, the embedding, not the actual tokens, but the vector embedding of them. So it's a numerical vector. And to find the relationship, uh, to or to measure a relationship between two vectors, like it's like, um, we know the simplest thing to do is to find the dot product, right? So what I ca I'm calculating is basically something based on the dot product between, um, let's say for A3, I'm going to find the dot product between X3 and X1, X3 and X2, X3 and X3. So I like, I have these three dot products and I'm going to calculate the weights. And A3 is going to be like, um, um, I'm multiplying all the input product vectors weight weighed by the by how related they are to X3. Basically, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm just saying the so I'm not actually showing you the actual the computation itself is uh, looks simple enough. Um, I'm calculating the weights are that are based on the um, the dot product. Uh, similarity between vectors. Uh, okay, so this is like um, the simplest uh, look at it, but of course I want to my model to learn how to weigh these relationships actually between words. So I'm going to introduce weights. Here is when I'm going to introduce, um, okay, uh, three, three matrix. matrix matrices, the query K and value matrix. Like um, um, the here, like you'll find this a Q, uh, like um, it's um, way, uh, okay, so the, the formula here looks, is, is wrong, but um, uh, uh, so it should be like uh, W2 uh, and Q is like a superscript. But anyway, so think about like for here when I'm talking about each uh, each um, for each vector here for x one uh, for a one x one is like um, it's a key so it's a current focus of attention when I'm calculating a one but when I'm calculating a two uh x1 is um it's like a word that can be related to it so it's it's a role is it's a key okay so i have three roles for each input one when it's a current focus of attention and i'm calling it when it's a query um the role when it's preceding the input and that is when it's key and when it's finally when it's um uh, when it's used as value to compute the output. So there are three roles for each, the vector will, each vector, each input, sorry, each one of these input is going to play three roles. Here is a focus of attention. Um, and uh, then it sounds like a, a, an input as a predecessor for X2. And uh, like when it's like in the, it can also be used to calculate the output in the in the final when it's weight. So it's like uh, um, here. Okay, so here it's the input and also used to calculate the output. Okay, so there are three roles, and here I and I introduce three weight matrix, which I will calculate um, an embedding for each word as for each row. It's wrong, sorry. So um, I'm sorry about that. The formula looks is wrong, but okay. So just think that I'm, I'm multiplying x, the vector with a weight matrix um, to calculate each of these ones. Okay. This generally, this is what will, it will look like in general for each input. Let's say I'm calculating only. So this is the same as before. This one, I'm just taking this part, x a3, and it's a relationship to x1, x2, and x3. After introducing these three matrices, matrices, so for each, uh, this is a vector x1, the input. I'm going to calculate three uh, input uh, vectors from it by multiplying it by the weight uh, 
matrix for key, a query, and, um, and value. So I'm getting like three vectors uh, for each one of these. And then um, uh, with, uh, with a vector that is for key, because these are predecessors for x, x, um, for x, uh, for x, x3, sorry, for k, x3, yes. I'm going to calculate the dot product, basically, uh, which is called a score. Um, I'm going to calculate uh, basically a weight, right? Uh, for for each, how important each of these, sorry, each of these vectors are for my final one. And then I'm going to sum, um, yeah, okay. So, I mean, it looks complicated, but it's like if you read it slowly, you'll understand it. The, the, the main I don't I hope that you're getting the main idea. The main idea is I'm, I'm introducing I'm trying to I'm basically calculating dot similarities between vectors and using them to weigh instead of using x3 which was the input just one token I'm calculating um, a, a representation of it that is taking into account information from words that come from before it and how I weigh the importance of these vectors it depends on the dot similarity. That's it. How like you do this uh, in, uh, mathematic, uh, mathematically, and that you need to introduce uh, some weight uh, matrices. These are just details, but the main idea is that uh, the representation of your words you want to include some uh, information from the the word that come before it. This is the main idea of self attention. However, this is an important thing. I said, like, uh, I was talking about dot similarity. And dot similarity, it can be, it can be measuring, of course, it depends on what the vector represents. So it can be measuring the similarity in meaning, right? Between the two vectors, with the two tokens or the two words. But, uh, we know that relationships between words can, ba can be, there are different types of relationship between words in a, in a context. There is like the syntactic uh, relationship, there is semantic relationship meaning, and there is discourse relationship. So syntactic is like, uh, for example, um, the syntax like uh, of, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the language or the, of, sorry. This is how exactly the words look like. So this, this some words, or some part of the of the sentence will depend on others when they or they relate to others on how they are formulated. Um, what they mean will depend on other words that come before them. And also there are words that are related not in meaning but more like um, they are providing. Um, some like uh, uh, other kind of relationships. So it's like, um, so I want to remember like the discourse relationship, like is uh, reasons and background. And uh, so just I'm saying just in general, like uh, language, it, what, the relationship between words in, in, in language um, are, are, there are multiple types. So one type of, of like one layer of attention like this one is not going to be able to measure all of these different types of attention so instead of using only one it can use multiple layers uh, in parallel and these are called and when i do that it's called uh, using multi-head attention so i'm basically using multi-head or parallel uh, self-attention layers so these are like calculated uh, in, in parallel, they, they don't depend on each other. So I'm just doing, like, I'm, I'm going to be um, calculating the, the dependence of, like, in the out, output, my output representation of a particular word is going to depend on the words, other words in the same sequence but in different in different ways in different measuring different kind of relationships so i'm just repeating this with different weights uh, and different in different layers that's how i get most head attention so this is what what you like uh, okay so this is how it looks 
um, more or less. So each one of uh, each head of attention is going to have its own weight, you know, its own weights, uh, query, key, and value, as you remember. And each one of those are going to produce produce for me an output that is kind of a representative of like here. Let's see, I'm looking at X. Um, it doesn't matter. So uh, let's say I'm talking about XN, and these are going to be here. I will have like four representations of XN. All of them, or each one, like um, let's say, is in encoding a particular type of relationship uh, of language re re relationships. And then I'm going to put all of this together, like um, in one representation. Uh, so I'm reducing the size again, but <clears throat> this is the main idea. Okay, so what I hope you'll have in transformers, transform blocks, is a multi-head self-attention um, uh, layer. Okay, so um, as I said, so yeah, this is what I'm talking about, transformer block, but. Um, Give me one second, one moment. Um, okay. uh, time is um, all right. So I'm sorry about this. Okay. So as I said, this is just like a, a general thing. Um, so a transformer block. He said. Like a transformer model is going to be built of transformer blocks and have um, several. Each one, each block will have um, four types of layers, not lawyers. Uh, so we'll have a self attention layer, as I said. And um, there, there is feed forward layer, which is just like normal. I can think about it. It's just a normal uh, neural network. Um, layer, there are residual connections and normalizing layers. So this is how, like, it kind of like uh, the graphic, uh, how it looks. Uh, so for this is my input to the block. So it's not necessarily the the actual input of the model. It can be like it's uh, it can be in the middle. So uh, I have an input, I have multi-head attention, as I said, and I will get out a representation of the, of the, of the input that takes into account different types of um, relationships between, um, to, between the, 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 um, the a token and a, a other tokens that comes with it in the same sequence. Um, I have a layer of normaliz normalization. So this is just like uh, some kind of normalization. So the vectors, I here I get vectors, right? Um, these are like, um, uh, what? They are just vectors. So vectors of some dimension, usually like it's um, a big dimension, like let's say it's a thousand to, to 24 or like an even bigger. Uh, what I, in the um, normalization is just like I'm normalizing the vector in a sense that like, the same way, like it can be the z-score normalization. You know what z-score means? Normalization is just like you are um, uh, basically, uh, z-score normalization is when you like put the mean to zero and uh, the standard deviation to one. It's just like uh, this normal, uh, the, 
the normal distribution uh, standardization basically so what i what i'm doing the goal is that i'm just uh, um changing the value of of my of my vector the elements of my vector such that they don't, are not so huge you know in the end i'm here what i'm what i'm training is a neural network and remember neural networks are trained by calculating the um graded descent and doing all of this um uh uh, backward propagation, if you remember how neural network works. If you don't know how neural network work, works, please read on it um, a little bit just to understand how it works. So just calculate this gradient descent. If you are the vector, so the values you are getting out as output are huge, uh, you will get problems with like the gradient descent is vanishing. Um, so uh, just what are you doing is normalizing the values so that like um, the learning uh it is not it's not going to be too slow or have actual problems okay so this is just like for that um residual connections these are like uh, basically you're adding the input as is to the to the output you get from the layer this is uh, uh, like the goal of it is some kind of regularization um uh Again, so these are just feed forward. These are just like normal neural network layers. It's going to be like two layers uh, with some weights. And um, again, so again, normalization. And then you can go out. This is your output is going to be uh, the same size. And you can yeah put another transformer block after that. So this is just like the general. Um, uh, uh, built of, of uh, a transformer uh, block. Okay, so if you like, uh, okay, so this is like the general general thing. Another thing we can talk about is like, uh, you know, you, you like probably came across this encoder and decoder. And this is like just the general. Um, if you notice, I was talking about um when i talk in the, uh, explaining the self-attention i was explaining that you you finding the relationship between words and uh, a word and each word that come before it not the one that after it just the one that come before which is not like all the kind of models some models take into account the words that come before and after um so the the models that take into account only the words that come before are more like uh, the models that are uh, like training for ge generating so like knowing the words in a sentence up to some 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 like end you want to generate the next word you don't know the 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 the, the rest of the sequence basically so so this is like what, what i was talking about before but it's not all there are another kind of models so okay an encoder model um is like uh, all like there is um, for example uh, for an example of this is um an encoder model is like bird is bi-directional encoder model it takes into account the whole um the whole input while a decoder is uh take uh, into account just up to um a point and then to create to, to generate the target sequence. This is just like a, I'm just saying like vaguely, not not um, precisely. So yeah. So as I said, encoder only models. These are good for tasks that require understanding the input uh, as a whole, and they are useful for things like sentence classification and, inter and name entity recognition. And as I said, also, like you have this by bird is one of these bidirectional encoder. It's a bidirectional encoder. So it's called bidirectional because, like, here, this is the important part that, sorry, shouldn't do this. The attention layer can access all the words in the initial sentence. So it's bidirectional, not only the words that come before, but also the ones that come after um and we didn't like uh, this takes into account something like uh, um 
uh, it's not only the backward attention, it has to be the bidirectional. Uh, we're going to see this in a moment. So just to mention the other ones, decoder only models, these are good for generative tasks. They take into a, the attention, they only have back bidirectional um, uh, attention. So they only look access to the world up to some position. This is like what I'm talking about it have access to or not this is the training what i'm talking is the training so in the training um a decoder only model is is trained such that like it has it's asked to generate the next word and it has the sequence up to just one or one point it has to generate the next word and then it's like uh, after generating that word it's added to the sentence to the sequence and generate the, the next word and then the next and so on and so forth uh for encoder only models or bi-directional attention the um, these are trained in a way that they uh, they have a mask uh, so you, they have the whole sentence but then one word in the middle is missing or it can be like a couple a few words not only just one but anyway this is how they are trained so they have access to the whole sequence not only the words that come before so, and then there are the encoder decoder models. These have encoder and decoder, and um, they are good for generative tasks. They require also understanding the whole text, like think about translation. To translate, you want to generate new, completely new text, but also you need to, to make some translation. You have to know the whole, um, to have to understand the whole uh, text, in its original language, you have to have like um, not only up to some point, you have to like understand the whole one, summarization the same way. And of course, here I'm like including um, in, in, like the, how the pre-training works um, and like example models. So the pre-training includes like uh, replacing random span of text, uh, several words with a single mask. So yeah um okay so what's here there are kind of attention that is included in the encoder decoder model called cross attention okay so when you have encoder and decoder okay uh so the decoder transformer model so both the encoder and decoder are made let's just look at them so i have encoder and decoder and you can see in general both the encoder and decoder have um they uh, okay they have a self-attention layer here so like you have the input self-attention layer like, this is what we talked about before so this is the encoder um, um so and the decoder looks mostly like it but it has this cross attention layer and the point is that what the difference between cross attention layer and um, self attention layer is that this one as output like like to calculate the output it takes into account the output from from the encoder that's why it's called self attention cross attention sorry um yeah so so it has to like sorry it's, um, it has two two attention layers, so it has self attention layer, the normal one, but it has a cross attention layer, so it has an extra. And this one, um, it has like um, it will take the values are coming from the output of the encoder. Um, so. Yeah, so this is like uh, this, like uh, the basic on attention. This is what. Uh, um, yeah, so this is that's all on attention we are going to talk about today. So any questions? I hope this was like at least some understanding was clear. Do um, you have any questions so far? I mean, in the next uh, few minutes, I'm going to discuss the input.
um, uh, to, to the model. And um, I don't think I'm going to go through like uh, the fine tuning just yet. This will be like next time. So, yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Another question? Yes, Jabez. Okay, so this uh, transformation part is a, a pre pre-training part yes it's not uh, fine tuning at all just yeah this is a yeah you will understand later or like we can discuss it that fine tuning is is happens with the same way as the pre-training there is uh, there's only a difference is that think about like um these models that we have which have like many many layers of like uh, uh, neural networks uh, layers all so many uh, neurons are so many um, way uh, like uh, there are so many weights okay in the in the model and when you are doing the pre-training what you are trying to the model is is like uh, through the this huge amount of data like you are giving it the data and you are asking it either to predict the next sequence or the next word or the next um, yeah the next token or you are giving it uh, the text with mask and you are asking it to predict it and it's going to be like calculating at each step is calculating the loss and going back so um uh so each model it has a lot of layers and a lot of um, weights basically and the model is through the training is going to be uh, fixing all of this uh, weight. So it's going to be like learning and adjusting the values of the weight. So such that it's um, the loss is minimized or like basically in simpler terms, such that it gets the right answer or the, as, as uh, yeah, as the right, as the right answer compared to the, to the training data. When it comes to the fine tuning, you are doing the same kind of training. The difference is you are not trying to adjust all the weights in the model. So let's just say, as an example, let's say the model has one billion uh, weight weights. When it comes to the fine tuning, you are going to freeze some of the layers, or meaning freezing some of the weights. So you are not going to touch them. You are only going to try to adjust a few, uh, like a, a few layers, or like um, uh, just a percentage of the weights. So you are doing the same kind of training. You are doing going through the whole thing. The, the, the same thing is just that you in the training, the model is not trying to, is not doing the same kind of computations. Not just the, only a percentage of the computations, and only adjusting a percentage of the of its parameters. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's like I'm saying it uh, orally. It's maybe not not very clear. But um, if it's yeah, not clear, so, yeah. Yeah. So pre-training uh, and fine-tuning you know, follow the same steps, but the difference is the computation uh, capacity and also the data. Yes, they are they are smaller. So you are doing it with a percentage of the data, a, 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 yeah, smaller data, and um, a percentage of the calculation. So is, this is going to be, we are going to explore this more, or if you read on fine tuning, you understand this more. Basically, yes, so it's going to be the computation are less because you are not adjusting the whole model. So the training, when you, so when you say you are training a machine uh, machine learning model, or it's a particular when you are talking about um, uh, deep learning or like neural or training neural networks, what you are doing is you are ad adjusting the parameters of your models, right? So the model take um, the input data, the training data, it calculates the output and it compares the output with the actual, the correct value. It calculates the loss. And then it readjusts all its parameters or part of its parameters such that it it minimizes uh, the, the its mistake basically it minimizes the loss the loss 
So it's, it's doing a lot of co computation to adjust all, uh, all of its parameters. In fine tuning, you take like, uh, you say, let's say the, um, uh, your model has a lot of parameters, you fix a lot of them. You say, I'm not touching any of these, so I'm not doing any computation for them. I'm only going to adjust a few. And that's why it's like, um, but the training looks the same, but the calculation is only a percentage of the original calculations, and the data required also is a percentage of the of the calculate of the data that they require for pre-training. So um, is that is that clear? Does that answer your question? Yes. Great. Okay. Yes. Great. Um. So just a, a small note. You already like came across this several times. So the input to the model, we have text, but then the text has to go through uh, two things, um, or three actually. So you take your text, you have to tokenize it first. So this is, you're going to have a tutorial on this, how to do the tokenization. But as you remember, the thing is that you do is you're going to break your, te your text into, uh, tokens into pieces so into tokens um okay how you break them into pieces will um depend on how you do your tokenization but like uh, a simple way to do it is just to break it into words let's say uh, what i'm looking at here let's say my sentence is janet will um uh, well, back the ball well, i don't know what this means but anyway this is my sentence and I divided it into five tokens. So this is the first step. The second step is I'm going to embed. So, uh, okay. The, the second step is going, I'm going to change instead of tokens, I'm going to change um, the tokens into embedding, numerical embedding. So let's say I'm going, I'm, I can choose like the dimension of my of my vector. I will say like each word is represented by, let's say a vector of, of uh, length 1000. This is up to me, I can choose that. And of course, when the model is um, training, so the embedding is going to be trained by the model. So I can initialize it to some like the random values and then as the model um, goes through all of these steps of training, is going to be like uh, learning or predicting a representation of each token, um, each the embedding of it. Okay, in the end, it will end up with some embedding that is supposed. So the embedding in the end is supposed to carry on the some kind of um, meaning of the of the. Or, um, uh, of of the of the token itself. Okay, this is one thing. The second, because we have to keep track, like of the position of of the token. So the token by itself is not like doesn't um, the meaning of the token in the sentence is not determined only by 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 the token itself, but also by its position in the in in the in the in the input. So I have to also somehow do some kind of positional embed, embedding, meaning that I have to embed also where this token is in the sentence or in my sequence, input sequence. And I can do that like there is a simple way of doing it is just by uh, actually the same way that I'm embedding uh, a, the word or the token into a vector, a numerical vector of some length. I can embed also its position just as a vector and add them together. And basically, the model is going to be um, uh, learning uh, both, both embeddings. Um, so this is just one, one way to do it. Um, so this is how like they done it in the first uh, Transformer paper, the one I talked about. Attention is all you need. You can see that. So it's positional embedding or positional encoding, basically. So I'm um, just saying how to take into account the position of a token into the into the in the in the input. Okay, so 
uh, I know I like this tutorial was just a lot of uh, blah 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 uh, I didn't show you actual um, mini I show you minimal um, mathematical formulas and um, and a lot of like uh, maybe not completely precise explanations but um, so these are like uh, some basic concepts that are or are like uh, fundamental to the transformer uh, transform models which are elements are all some kind of transformers um so yeah that's it uh in as i said this is a part one i said several times we are going to discuss in, in more details about how the training works and like basically what is pre-training, what is fine-tuning, and the different ways to do fine-tuning. There are going to be also more discussion about how to prepare the input, the tokenization, and the embedding, how, what they mean, and how to do them, and the different kind of um, uh, how you can improve, um, or like what is the advantage, disadvantage of each kind of uh, method to approach all of this stuff. But yeah. And that's it for today. Um, any questions? Any? So, yeah, um, I, I actually haven't included this references. So I will share this presentation in the drive and we let some um, useful, I think, references. So one of them is just like the, um, can start with this. I think it's very good. The hugging face uh, they have a course basically on transformer models it's very good i suggest that you go through it and it's also like it also includes parts on how to do fine tuning and the tokenization and all of that so you can like uh, it's recommended i think it's also included in the time document probably um there are other like um if you want to understand more how transformer works and stuff, I will be including also other references, more like uh, theoretical, let's say, um, in 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 the references with the presentation. Anyway, uh, any questions? Anything that comes to mind? You can say like I didn't understand. Just I uh, can try to. We explain. Um, uh, yes, Hillary. Yeah, I, I didn't understand nearly everything. Like mostly the self attention and multi head. Um, uh, yeah, I, I saw many uh, things about uh, neural network, the forward feedings, and also maybe you can elaborate like a, a summary on that and why and why we use it like different situation. okay so i mean it's it just like uh, the um, the basic thing that you need to understand um let's say if there is something i can share this one give me a moment um so the main thing that you, you need to understand is that the, the attention layer is the one that like uh, let your model um, um, take into consideration the context, not only the just one the one word, but also like the adjacent or like its neighboring words. So I'm sorry, I say in words, but I mean token. So think like your input is only tokens, not actually words. Not necessarily words but okay the thing is that you need um for your model to keep uh, to understand to learn to understand the context of the world or take into consideration the context of the world it has to somehow um take into account the, the other words that are in the sequence and this attention layer is is like responsible for doing that. Okay, how it do it does that? Let me just uh, maybe I can find the. Uh, um, 
little I don't know so which like like um let me say do you want the mathematics is it easier for you to see the mathematics or you prefer not uh, uh, no I, I it, with the math I can I, I can try to understand into someone but I, I was asking like uh, is it like for the self attention I'm out here is it like um, to get uh, to know uh, the meaning of the the word in in a uh, in, in the sentence or, or something like that because when we tokenize we we may have different words like they they can't have much meanings sometimes is that the essence of the attention yeah so uh, that's what like uh, when i say meaning i should always use like some kind of uh, quotations because it's not exactly meaning um the like it's not the meaning in the same way we understand it as humans this is like the model how it's going to be um the the it's logic is not exactly the same as how we think so like don't think about it in that way yes tokens can be words but they can also be sub words or they can be even characters it depends on how you do the tokenization but the same self uh, the attention layer is still does the same thing keep into account that uh let me just maybe you can share with you this nice course i think it's a book um maybe yes I, i'm actually taking most of these drafts from it just say so yeah so this is like the yeah, so I already I have this also, but like just looking at this kind of an explanation of what, what um, uh, a self-attention layer is doing. So let's say this is your sequence. I know it looks. Um, so let's look at it like this. So I have two layers. Um, or let's you know, think about like a so what is that self-attention layer is supposed to do so yeah so this is my sentence this is my sequence the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired and say i'm looking at the representation of it in particular in this sentence uh this is like just the um again here i'm using as tokens i'm using actual words and i'm to i'm saying things about the meaning uh, like uh, in in how we understand it but this is just how just to um the intuition is not uh, exactly how it works but it's the how to to get the intuition about it is that when the model is calculating the representation for it I wanted to take into account the representation of all the words that came before it. Okay. So it will first, in the first step, the very, very first step before, like when the model is initialized randomly, it will be taking like uh, um, the, the relationship between it and all of the words here and like where, like, producing a representation that that like take all of this representation into account so it basically what is is doing is um let's say just look at the mathematical formula is calculating um so and it's, so i said i started with my input x i and i'm calculating out output a hi so these are vectors and these are vectors and i'm weighing them with some alpha and i'm calculating the alpha as basically the soft max which is like just um uh, a normalized version of the dot product between the vectors so um so yes the score the dot product between the pro between so it's calculating the co-similarity between the the vectors and then I'm just like normalizing them to, to the so, so, so that their sum is one. So, and then calculating the output as the weight of the, in, of the input uh, vectors weight with this alpha. That's how I get this. So it should be like, has like the animal didn't cross that street because 
all of them, all the vectors are summed into the new representation of it, but with different weights. And then when the model goes through its training and it learns uh, uh, like uh, adjust its weights, it's going to uh, adjust its representation of the words. It's going to be, the it is going to be getting more weight from animal than the other, all the other um, words before it, because this one is closer or like it, like the meaning of it depends on this one. So this is just the intuition of how it works. Does this like make sense? Yeah, yeah. it makes sense. The, the math is, uh, I understand the math and- uh, Okay. The, the problem is the meaning, like why why is it done that way? Why, why is self-attention is done? But uh, I, I think I got it, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, remind me next time I will include all the maths. I would love to do that actually. I thought because sometimes the mask looks scary for some people, so. Okay. Anyway, any other questions? Yeah, so, the, so this is the, uh, the self-attention first when you get to multi-head. And uh, so just to show you this. So again, uh, instead of like, you are adding just weight matrices for, for you. So you are doing the same, but now the score is, calculated between x1 and x2 or xi and xj is used with these weight matrices are involved, not only the vectors themselves, and uh, and uh, and calculating the output is also going to include some weight vector, here, weight matrix also here are involved. So you're just adding more weights that can be fixed. And, uh, and for like um, the, Cross maybe it's not here. The, I wanted to show the cross attention, but okay, it's not like the cross attention is just like you're adding. Um, okay, so you are adding like uh, for instead of this, uh, these V's are actually you are getting them from then a completely different block, which is uh, encoder. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so the mass itself is just like simple. Um, linear algebra is just including a lot of weights that's why it's, uh, it's difficult or like it takes um, it's expensive because there are so many layers and so many weights that need to be adjusted in a lot of steps anyway uh it's a matter of scale but on the smaller scale is the mass looks simple okay any other questions Okay, so because we are over time, let's stop here. Um, and, um, yeah.